favourite good looking Aussie. <laughs> I wish. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. As a student, I'm told that many things in life will make you happy. The people in your life, whether that's family or friends, your materialistic values, the things you own. Some may say money, some may not. Personally, I've been pretty happy with the pocket money raised, thanks parents. But what makes me really happy is an idea. That little period of time where you can peer into a window of hope and chance, whether it may change your future or the future of the world, or an idea which may change everything. And it makes you feel good, right? Knowing how your life will unfold for the better. Consider the internet, a tool so powerful, yet based on such a simple idea that anyone should be able to communicate or email each other, and yet so simple to use. Even my mom can do it. The first email was sent only 40 years ago from a computer the size of a house. Now, I can send one from my pocket in the middle of Miss Halligan's geography lessons. <laughs> but where was the starting point? I mean, with a system so complex, how many complex things do we need to piece together in order to get to that final product? Actually, the answer is much simpler than you imagined. All you start with is this, a pencil. You see, maybe sometimes complexity is built from simplicity. Maybe we need to revert back to basics in order to reach our complex goals. Take the Burj Khalifa, an amazing creation so complex and intricate. You may wonder how the design of such a building is made possible. Well, my dad was the chief engineer on the project. Do you want to see his desk? Perhaps the first observation I can offer as a student is in the successful pursuit of happiness. Less is more. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some lofty thoughts that I've proposed in the past few minutes. But the problem is, all of these ideas relate to humans who are known to be quite complex creatures. There's a lot of noise in our nature and this noise can be distracting. Let us test this observation on a much simpler creature, such as a dog, or perhaps my mum. <laughs> How would these creatures pursue happiness? Ladies and gentlemen, we know that a faithful dog will follow its owner, whether it is happy or unhappy, or safe or in danger. The critical decisions that a dog makes are not based on any measure of happiness, but on a much more powerful force, the contentment that binds it to its owner. This is why dogs will jump into rivers to save their owners and keep them warm when they are lost in the snow. Now, the dog is clearly not happy. It is not pursuing happiness, but yet staying faithful to the much more powerful force, the contentment in security, the contentment in companionship, the contentment in having food on a plate. So perhaps the second observation I can offer is that your pursuit of happiness is in fact a pursuit of contentment. Ladies and gentlemen, the final question I have for you is simply, why should we pursue happiness? A noted playwright, George, George Bernard Shaw, once said, a lifetime of happiness. No man alive could bear it. It would be hell on earth. Folks, you smile because you know the true wisdom behind those words. Could you really live in a perfect utopia? Imagine a world where there are no single socks in the drawer. Imagine a world where there are no spelling errors. Imagine a world where we could actually, and I mean it, actually understand our mothers. This utopia would be truly boring. So it appears that the final ironic twist to this question is that the pursuit of happiness would have us favor simplicity over complexity. Yet some complexity is needed 
in order to avoid boredom. In summary, may I offer to you that your pursuit of happiness should rather be a pursuit of contentment, and it should be done in simple building blocks. But we should sprinkle a little bit of mystery on there to save us from going completely mad. Thank you.